in today's videos ladies and gentlemen we are going to be doing something very very neat to the old dirty max sitting here with half a million miles on it we're going to go ahead and we're going to change our hot air intake into a cold air intake stay tuned What is up YouTube, how's everybody out there doing today? I hope you guys are having an exciting freaking day. But before we get this video started, we've got our little sponsorship here from good old Oxbeam. These guys, I kid you not, these guys have been a sponsor of the channel for a very, very long time. And I have a buddy of mine that's on his way to the shop right now. And he has an old piece of junk Ford pickup truck diesel and he needs some headlights. So I was like, you know what? Let me go check out and see if I can get you a set of headlights, make a video about it. And uh, they were kind enough to send me their F16S and their H13s uh, right here. They're their new ones, I'm assuming. And man, they look like pretty. Look at that, look at that. Let's, uh, let's get them out of the box here. As you can see, the packaging is really, really nice with Oxbean. They definitely know what they're doing when they're packaging these lights. Um, or these bulbs, but these are supposed to have a real nice, uh, uh, I guess they're a newer version of their lights, but uh, they're supposed to be really, really good. So they come with a nice little sticker here, and you got all your information packets and stuff like that, and how to install, and oh, look at all that cool stuff, zip ties, sticky things. Everything you need is in the box, which is pretty freaking cool. Let's get them installed. All right, so this is a good one. Anthony's got his Ford here. And we're going to be actually, so here's the best part, guys. Here's, where, here's the best part, is these are not like new, like lenses or anything. These are aftermarket lenses. And you can see, they look like dog shit. They look like dog shit. Go turn your headlight on. These are, what are these, HIDs or halogens or something? Normal stock. Normal stock. That's what they look like through shitty ass headlights that need to be sanded and taken care of. It's pretty bad. All right, let's get let's get one side in. Let's get the worst side in and compare it to the best side. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's do that. Alrighty. So, driver's side is the new ox beam. Passenger side is junk old bulb. But keep in mind, this is a bad headlight cover too. So, ready? Go ahead and turn it on. It's definitely white. Definitely whiter. Compared to that yellow junk, or that yellow junk I'm pointing. It's definitely brighter. Oh, it's gonna be brighter. Wait till, wait till you see it at nighttime. I can't wait. <laughs> now you really just need to get headlights. That's all you really need now. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get the other side in real quick. All right, guys, both sides are in. These things are gonna be bright. Anthony's gonna love them at nighttime. Yes, Especially I'm compared to those old yellow pieces of junk that were in here. Um, unfortunately, with the Ford, you do have to take the headlight out in order to get to uh, those bulbs are kind of a pain in the butt. First link in the description below, if you're interested in these F-16s, go check out Oxbeam. What is up, YouTube? How's everybody out there doing today? I hope you guys are having a fabulous day. Uh, my lens, it's just always dirty. Always dirty. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pop the hood on the old Dirty Max here. See, it was up to half a million miles, 270,000 now, I think if I remember correctly. So previously in a previous video and pop the hood here in this ugh, freaking thing. Previously, um, I ended up installing this really, really, really cheap coder intake from Spectra. And a lot of you guys were like, Andy, that thing's a piece of junk. You just turned a colder intake into a hot air intake. That's all you did, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I've come up with an idea, a little idea to help cut down on some of the heat from the engine bay on this metal tube, which is hot currently. And I'll show you guys something. I got my little heat gun here, my little thermal red. The truck was just running. So let's see what we got here 125 degrees 128 132 131 degrees 35 right there as we get closer 
Oh, 130 degrees. Hopefully you guys can see that 133 degrees is what that tube is. And obviously, or if you guys can see me, obviously if you know anything about uh, engines, diesel engines, gas engines, whatever it may be, uh, there's a thing called IETs. IETs are called, uh, or abbreviation for intake air temperature. It is the air temperature that the intake or the MAF or the I, well, it's the air temperature that the IET is seeing that's coming through that tube. Now, I'm not really sure if the MAF on this is an integrated IET sensor or not. Um, I'm not sure if this even has an IET for a diesel, but you know, we're using a gas engine as an example. If you have a metal tube and that metal tube is getting up to 130 degrees, well, guess what guys? the IET sensor is going to be reading air coming through that tube at 130 degrees or more, which means the timing is gonna be cut, fuel is gonna be added to the tuning of the engine, whether it be OEM tuning or aftermarket tuning, to compensate for that hot air. That's why, you know, for example, if you have a diesel or a boosted vehicle and you hear the term, it's boost weather, that is meaning we have cold weather coming in, 40s, 50 degree uh, weather that's coming in or air temperature outside at nighttime, it's great for racing because your IETs are reading much lower. They're reading in the 60s, 70 degree weather or 67 degree temperature range, which then at that point, your ECU will adjust its timing and its fueling accordingly for that nice, cool, dense air coming into your engine. And we all know that engines love nice, cool, dense air. So obviously we have a little bit of an issue here with this, making this 130 degrees uh, temperature, which means there's gonna be 140 degrees, if not more or higher, going into the engine of this Duramax and we need to cool it down. So I came up with a solution. Came up with a little solution. I'm gonna show you, you guys might laugh at me. You might, you might think I'm funny. You might laugh at me, I don't care. But I want to try something, and there's really not going to be a way to measure it um, after I do try it, but it's definitely going to help in a sense of keeping heat away from the intake. And that is some of this cool tape isolating, isolating tape, flexible tape with strong adhesive up to 400 degrees direct heat, wrap and track wires, cables, hoses, fuel lines, seams, and more. I've got a roll of this. I don't, I'm hoping it's gonna be enough to be honest. And I have another roll of, of this as well. And the plan is to wrap the intake up in that protective sheathing. So maybe you guys can try something like this in your uh, vehicle as well and see what happens. So step number one, we gotta get that intake tube back off, which is pretty easy. Couple uh, clamps and out she comes. All right, as you can see, it is stupid hot. I mean, this is not, <laughs> this is definitely not, uh, it is hot, it is very, very hot. So we're gonna leave the MAF sensor in because we really don't need to mess with that all that much. Put it here on the table. <sighs> nice smooth piping. Now inside, it is also hot inside, this piping. So let's get a little bit of a reading of what it is inside the piping to get a little bit of better idea of what the metal is inside. 121 degrees. That's inside temperature. Let's see if we point it back there. 116 degrees, 117 degrees. So if we measure here, it's 118. We measure on the outside, it's 110. 107 on the outside, you see? But on the inside, 118, 119. So as you can see, there is a huge difference in temperature from the outside to the inside. It's almost as if the inside temperature is going to always be hotter than the outside temperature. And that's mainly because of the radiating, radiating heat from outside here. It's basically going right through the metal and it's staying in there because it has no other escape other than into the engine. So even though the outside is reading 107 degrees and the inside is reading 120, we're having 120 plus degree heat going into the engine, which is never, never a good thing. Uh, so let's start wrapping this thing and, and see how it turns out.
she is fully wrapped every little basic inch that i could cover is covered on this thing doesn't look like the greatest thing in the world but if you compare this to like nasa probes that are out in space that have that gold or that silver tape on it this is kind of the same thing i guess i don't know maybe maybe not maybe it's not the same thing but it is it is pretty dang close um what we're gonna do we're gonna put this thing on the truck and i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the filter which is gonna go on this side here we're gonna leave the filter off and we're gonna do some measurements of the outside temperature with the hood closed for a little bit or maybe what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll start the truck up with this attached with the filter on we'll let it run for like 10 minutes okay and then we'll shut it off we're gonna measure the outside here and then measure we'll take the filter off and measure the inside tubing and see if it made a difference so let's get this thing back on guys All good to go, all bolted down. Let's start this puppy up. It is 12.50 at the time of startup. There we go, 12.50 at the time of startup. And uh, we're gonna let it warm up with the hood closed for about 10 minutes. And then we're gonna do our temperature and uh, we're gonna see what we find out, guys. And there she goes. A few moments later. It is one o'clock, so that means that means 10 minutes have elapsed. So we're gonna grab our thermo, therm, thermo, thermo, I don't know, temperature gun. I'm gonna find, man, that thing's hazing. I don't know if you guys can see that. Who wants to recommend some injectors? She might need some. <laughs> All right, I did move her outside. That way it doesn't smoke up the entire, um, entire shop. But temperature, hopefully you guys can see temperature. Temperature's up there pretty good. Here's the mileage of the truck. I know you guys love to see the mileage of the truck. 500,000, miles. It's freaking amazing. So we got a little bit over 10 minutes. Ah, let's shut her off and uh, pop the hood. Here we go. Basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna measure the piping at different locations. And before, after a drive from um, New Holland to here, it was 140 after sitting for a couple minutes. Let's feel it first, actually. It doesn't feel as hot as it was before. It definitely doesn't feel as hot at all. And the hood was closed, you guys seen that. So let's see what we got here. 100 degrees, 73, I got 73 degrees there for a minute, 107. 108 let's try over here 111 now if you remember last time that pipe was 120 degrees almost 130 degrees and we're now at 107 external temperature um, 72 89 look at that 96 that's crazy so let's take the filter off and let's measure the inside of the pipe and see what the inside of the pipe sees Now keep in mind guys, we're not measuring for a temperature drop. We're measuring 
Oh, that feels so much cooler in there. We're not measuring for a temperature drop, we're measuring for a temperature difference. So we wanna see a difference between the outside where the heat is coming from to the inside of the pipe here. Um, before the outside was like 130, then we took the pipe off, put it on the bench for like a minute or two, measured the outside and the outside was like 107 or 109, something like that, 110. And the inside was almost 120. So now that we're measuring this at 107 outside, after 10 minutes of running, we're gonna go ahead and measure right here. That's 90 degrees, the wind is blowing a little bit, 80 degrees. Now let's measure the inside of the pipe. And that's 103 degrees. So there is a, a drop. There definitely is going to be a drop. 95, 80, 82, 81. And the inside of the pipe, 104. Let's see further back here. 104, 105, 104. Before it was, it was a lot hotter. Um, and that was actually after it's sitting and actually after it was like off the truck and actually on the bench. It sat for a couple minutes, guys, you've seen it yourself. And the temperature on the outside was 130 degrees and the temperature on the outside when we took it off and put it on the bench was 110 or something like that. This thing literally just got done getting turned off and running and we literally measured it on the spot without a break or without stopping the video or anything. And it shows you that there is a little bit of a difference when using this wrap. And I'm sure as it gets hotter, it's probably gonna be a little bit better as well. Um, you're still gonna have hot air no matter what, um, just because of the filter sucking in ambient air outside and hot air outside, you're still gonna have hot air no matter what. But I'm hoping that this here will actually help reduce the heat that this pipe is collecting that way when the air comes out of the filter and passes through this pipe, it doesn't heat up as fast or as much as it did previously. So hopefully it works, I don't know, hopefully it works. So now, obviously some of the other things we can do here is we could probably enclose this box a little bit more that they give us with the Spectre setup. Um, put heat tape on the back side of this box as well and on the inside to reflect that heat away from uh, the filter as well, which is also going to be a very, very good idea too. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the big surefire way of finding out if this really, really is going to help or it's really just a waste of time, comment below and let me know, <laughs> is uh, fuel mileage. If my fuel mileage actually goes up, then yes, I can definitely say it worked. If it doesn't go up and it stays relatively the same, even if it goes up by half a point or one mile per gallon, I will be totally happy with that. And that'll tell me right off the bat that this actually did something that actually worked a little bit. Obviously in colder weather, this is really going to shine in colder weather compared to hotter weather. But in colder weather, this wrap is definitely gonna work a lot better. So now we gotta do our little thumbnail. We need a thumbnail. Let's climb up on a ladder here and uh, get a nice picture of the truck and be like, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> That'll probably be my thumbnail, honestly. Gotta make thumbnails during the process of the videoing. Um, these videos only take like a couple minutes to make, which is nice. But at nighttime, it takes about an hour or two to edit them. And uh, it's a lot easier just to do the thumbnail in the video itself than to uh, mess around with, oh, let's use paint and all that other stuff. Even though I could probably make better th thumbnails, maybe. I don't know. But uh, who knows? I don't know. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Oh, that's out of the way here. There we go. Let's make that work. Yeah. I didn't want to cut that AC wire, so I put that right there. Bend it a little bit. There we go. That way it's away from there. All right, let's shut the hood and the video. Well guys, there you have it. I think it made a little bit of a difference. Like I said, uh, fuel mileage is definitely gonna be the tall tale sign of whether or not that heat wrap actually works on a metal intake uh, tubing, uh, one of the cheap intakes. You can also do it on plastic intakes as well. If you wanna wrap your plastic intake up or even your metal intake, it's gonna work well both ways if you want to try to reflect heat engine heat away from a metal pipe or a plastic pipe it's definitely going to help so comment below and let me know what you guys think of the video let me know if i'm just losing my mind or if this was actually a pretty good idea and you're looking forward to seeing if it does make a fuel difference but other than that guys if you enjoyed the video give it a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe instagram diablo formula racing and deuces guys